I have absolutely no clue where the stimulus negotiations stand up as of right now. Yesterday, Nancy Pelosi rescinded her deadline of 48 hours from Sunday to the end of the week. Reporters tell me that rival staffers have been meeting, trying to hammer out some language. And Steve Mnuchin's been on the phone a lot. All I can reasonably say right now is that as of right now, at this moment, things still look pretty unlikely. And that a certain deal might actually get struck before the election between the White House and Nancy. But the reason I say things are unlikely for now is not because of Nancy Pelosi, but because as she gets closer and closer to the election and more willing not to hold this legislation up for political reasons, the other main impediment that we predicted here all along is starting to kick into high gear. And that, of course, is the Republican Senate majority with the median senator vehemently opposed to spending money in the middle of the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. Last week, I read you multiple statements from GOP senators in a private call with the White House in which they invented reasons as to why they would supposedly lose their positions in the Senate if they voted for a large stimulus package. And one of the warnings that I gave is that this is exactly what the median Republican senator actually believes. Well, here's some more evidence that you need. Senator Richard Shelby of Alabama, he spoke to reporters yesterday in his capacity as the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, which for reference is the committee that literally writes a potential stimulus bill. And he told them, quote, one point eight trillion is a high number to me, adding it's getting real late and I don't think we're going to buy something. It's unknown, ending with it's getting to be toward the last minute and the clock keeps ticking away. And I'm not optimistic about us doing anything. Well, you barely need to read between the lines there, folks. That is the Senate speak for this thing ain't going anywhere. And if you needed more evidence, take this very interesting phrasing from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who told reporters yesterday of a potential $2 trillion stimulus deal that, quote, obviously, if that were to come over, we'd have to consider it and would consider it. Hmm, consider it. So as reporter Sung Min Kim of the Washington Post observed, quote, McConnell looking at the bill, crumpling it up and throwing it in his fireplace that was destroyed during the War of 1812 is technically considering it. Furthermore, while McConnell committed to putting such a stimulus bill on the floor of the Senate for a vote, he didn't commit to when, only saying, quote, at some point, there you go. You've got the guy who's going to write this bill saying the price tag is too high. You've got the GOP leader who's refusing to commit to a hard vote and support for the bill. And you've already got at least a dozen Republicans on the record opposing such a deal in principle, though that hasn't stopped them before. In case you needed more evidence, late yesterday the news broke that McConnell has even told the White House privately that they absolutely should not move forward with the stimulus bill before the election. Okay, as I said last week, Pelosi has been a fool this entire time for holding up stimulus negotiations. The Senate GOP is capable of doing that just fine. And now I want to turn my focus to just how fundamentally out of step these people are with the American people and with the GOP's base. They are not represented whatsoever of the voters who put them into office. And if Trump is gone in two weeks after the election, the opportunity will remain to wipe them out and show them how powerless they really are once again. A New York Times poll literally released yesterday shows that 72 percent of all voters think that Congress should pass a stimulus bill, including half of all Republican voters, not a stimulus bill of any kind, a two trillion dollar stimulus bill that tracks with Pew Research polling from a few weeks ago that I've shown you all so many times, which actually shows that two thirds of all Republican voters would support a large economic stimulus program. Again and again and again, it is becoming clear which way the Republican Party wants to turn if Trump loses in 2020. They want to return right back to the deficit hawkery days of 2015, where people like Paul Ryan were ascendant. And if they do so, they will be dramatically out of step once again with their own party's voters, their country, and will once again be doomed to irrelevancy. This is where the Republican Party was headed before Donald Trump rode the escalator in 2015. And it seems to be the explicit political choice of the elite. And at least in 2015, they could say, well, yeah, maybe we're out of step with the American people, but the billionaire class will still love us. But look, as a matter of political expediency, the billionaire class has now spoken. Even if the Republican Party wanted to return to their old roots, they can't. 
because those people have left them behind. You've got the likes of Goldman Sachs out there openly saying they think it's better for stocks if Biden wins and even giving all of their employees off for Election Day so they can vote. You think that they're they're going to do that for the first time in their history out of the goodness of their hearts? Not a chance. Or take a look at this, which we'll discuss more in the show. Joe Biden's campaign raised almost $200 million this cycle from donors who gave at least 100 k You could say, yeah, but Trump does the same thing, and it's true. But guess what? Biden has raised literally twice as much as President Trump has from the same pool of donors giving more than 100 k in exactly the same time frame. Biden is so far outpacing Trump in the number of billionaires who are supporting his campaign. That's just Wall Street. Silicon Valley mega donors revealed yesterday they will literally spend a hundred million in the final days of the election working to defeat Donald Trump in favor of Joe Biden. The richest and most powerful people in America don't want the Republican Party anymore. And the Senate GOP has a choice. They can either work extra hard to win back these people, something which, given their social values, is 100 percent never going to happen. Or they can choose literally the last remaining route to power and relevancy. They can act on behalf of the people and their people. The future is uncertain, but soon it might actually be bright because, frankly, the people cannot be held back for too much longer.